morning, everyone. Welcome to Education, Leadership, and Beyond, Surviving and Thriving. My name is Andrew Murata, host of the program. It is show number 123, and so happy to be on with you. Uh, we are live on Facebook. We are a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Happy to be on Voice Ed Radio Canada and certainly going to social media and our friend at I, our friends at iTunes. So thank you so much uh, for tuning in. And again, check out all of those podcasts uh, at the Education Podcast Network. There's a bunch of great programs there, a bunch of great educators doing great things. So good morning. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. And again, we are live on Facebook. That means we can receive your uh, questions and comments. Uh, certainly uh, with our guest today, Asael Ruvalcaba, my friend from Texas. Um, and we're going to meet Asael here in a moment. He is a principal. He is a father. He is a leader uh, connected uh, around the country and just doing great things and is going to have a lot to share. I'm certainly excited to learn about that culture in that area. They are right on the border, uh, the Mexican border of uh, East Texas. And I'm looking forward to learning about that and the dynamics there. So we're gonna meet Asael in a moment. Uh, a quick commercial. Um, I have been doing a number of book studies uh, with my book, The Principle, Surviving and Thriving. Being that we're virtual, I've been able to connect with educators. So I would like to offer that uh, to you or your district if you're watching and um, uh, just reach out to me, whether it's uh, via Twitter at Andrew Murata 21 or my email is LLC at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to connect with you on what that could look like. I'd also be happy to discount the books to you 25% uh, to you and your district. So that is something that we're doing. Uh, I do want to thank also Dan Spanauer and the leadership publishing team for sponsoring the program. Uh, Dan writes a great journal called the Coaching and Leadership Journal. But this is also a book he put out, Leading Narratives, which has a number of great stories. Again, this is Dan Spanauer at the... Uh, leadership publishing team. Dan is an educator uh, and a coach. Uh, Dan would be happy to discount the journal and this book to you. Use the code uh, ELB Marada or ELB20, excuse me. Uh, use that code ELB20, Education Leadership Beyond 20, and you get a 20% discount. And I just wanted to uh, uh, share one of the stories in here. There's a ton of great stories. You can see they're short. I like to use them in speeches, uh, but this is one I've used with my students about checking their work. So the name of the story is called Check Your Work. A store owner overheard a boy talking on the phone, and the boy said, ma'am, can you give me the job of cutting your lawn? Woman on the phone, I already have someone to cut my lawn. The boy said, I will cut your lawn for half the price than the person who cuts your lawn now. The woman said, I'm very satisfied with the person who's presently cutting my lawn. Thank you. The boy said with more perseverance, I'll even sweep the floor and the stairs of your house for free. The woman said, no, thank you. With a smile on his face, he hung up. The store owner who was listening to all of this walked over to the boy and said, son, I like your attitude. I like that positive spirit and I would like to offer you a job. The boy said, no, thanks. But you were really pleading for one, the store owner said. He said, no, sir. I was just checking my performance on the job I already have. I am the one who is working for that lady, and I already cut her lawn. Great story about caring about your work, checking for feedback, seeing how you're doing and checking on things. Uh, so that is something that I do share uh, with my students, and I share that story. So uh, great to see so many people here uh, watching live. A lot of Bobcat uh, pride. We're going to meet the principal here in a moment. Uh, he's got some people on here. So um, I wanted to share those things with you. Those offers are there, uh, but let's get to it. Let's bring Asael in here. We're going to unmute his mic because I know he's got a lot to share. Uh, and we are going to welcome in the principal of Rio Hondo High School. Asael, nice to have you on the program. Hey, thank you, buddy. Thanks a lot for having me here this morning. Yeah. Thrilled to meet you, Asael. I know we've connected on Twitter um, and Asael is the principal of Rio Hondo High School. He lives in Brownsville, Texas. And if you don't know where that is, uh, that is right on the border of Texas and Mexico on the eastern part of Texas. Asael, why don't you tell us uh, you know, about that area, tell us about yourself and certainly your role as principal at Rio Hondo. That's it. Uh, yeah, once again, thank you, Andrew, for having me here. Uh, 
I'm I'm, uh, I'm a principal at Rio Hondo High School. We have about 550 students. Uh, it's a rural community, very very proud community uh, here in South Texas. Uh, originally from Brownsville, been here all my life. Uh, I've been in education for 25 years, uh, and and just. Uh, happy about life and happy about my job and our students and our staff and and all the great things that are happening in Rio Hondo. Yeah. I say I'll move over a little bit. I want to see your, your pretty face there. There you go. We'll get you right in the middle. You, I can only see the R on Rio Hondo. Um, and, and you, you know, you're so close to the, the Mexican um, border. I grew up in New York City, ASAL, where we had uh, a little bit of every culture but certainly there was a lot of uh, Mexican culture. And when I was a teacher, I remember meeting those young children coming to my room, not being able to speak a word of English. And it had a great impact on my life uh, to try to help these young people and, and, and help them learn English. Tell me about, like, is it a, almost a dual culture situation? Is, is everyone bilingual? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we're about maybe 25 miles away from the Mexican border. Uh, most of our kids and, and uh, definitely our parents and our grandparents have a lot of roots in, in Mexico. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, a lot of our kids speak Spanish. Uh, but when they're at school and, and, and just like me growing up, uh, we were forced to speak English. And, and, uh, and that that's still the, the I guess, the, the primary language that kids speak. Uh, and then at home, what's kind of different, uh, especially if they go to grandma's house or, or whatnot, uh, they have to speak Spanish. And is it, I mean, uh, are, is Spanish a course that's taught in the school or is it just that everyone speaks Spanish? You don't even have to have it as a course. No, we still have it as a course. Yes. Sir. Yeah. OK. And how about immigration uh, issues? Uh, uh, I say, do you have a lot of uh, families in there that just arrive at the school and uh, legal, illegal, that type of stuff. Is that, a, is that something that's constantly present in the community? It is, but we don't have, uh, you know, th those 25 miles, uh, do impact us as far as, uh, getting a lot of those families. Uh, most of them just, uh, we have other cities that are right along the border, like Bronzo that yeah. they move into. So those are the, the primary cities that they settle in. Uh, yeah. But in any case, we still get students out here from from Mexico, um, and it's it's you know and and even for me, it's a hard adjustment for for our students, some of those students, because even me growing up, my my first language was Spanish, uh, and I never mastered the Spanish language, uh, and I had a hard time also with the English language growing up. So it was a it was a mixture of both languages. And even today, we still use uh, here in South Texas. We we have our own vernacular, and and we say a lot of words, in in say in both languages that that don't even that we make up our own language. <laughs> Give me a couple examples. What's an example? So when I come visit you in Brownsville, that I, I can get by there. Give me a couple examples. Uh, I guess one of the main ones, or, or at school, you know, a kid might say. Uh, like uh, puedo chaponear el lápiz or el penso, you know. So we even mix, we we mix the languages. Uh, sometimes when when we're trying to find a parking spot, like we'll say eh, parqueate ahí, and it's not really that's not even a word parqueate. <laughs> uh, but that's the you know we just use them uh, interchangeably. I love it. I, I think that's great. And uh, again, I remember finally those days of teaching in New York City and, and helping those young people and, and learning Spanish myself. Uh, and I love speaking it. So I you know, I'd love I love hearing your, your voice. Um, I say, let's talk about your principal leadership. We have a number of people that know you watching uh, the Bobcat country here. And uh, Miss Chapa is watching, Miss Alanis uh, Salinas. A lot of, uh, I got to work on my pronunciations here. Uh, but if you have a question or comment for uh, Asael and I, please put it on there. It's great to see uh, so many people uh, sharing in your in your leadership. But tell me about your role as principal and, and your style, Asael. Like, what's your style of leadership? Uh, 
my style is is I, i'm i'm a people person um uh, and and i put a lot of emphasis on building those relationships with my staff uh if the way i see it if there's no trust if, if they can't trust you then you don't have anything so trust is very very important uh so it's something that i work on every single day uh I try to be uh honest i try to be transparent and i try to be real uh not only with my staff but with my students as well um and and we're we're this profession is about serving people that's what it's about you know we're not numbers we're people and and that means a lot to me uh growing up those were some of the lessons that my dad taught me you know as far as a we're, we're humans and if you can help out a human being a person whenever you can hey that's 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 an expectation. So that's something that, that I take pride in. And, and uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're here for, for our students and our staff, first and foremost. Beautiful. And I know uh, you had shared in our pre-show meeting about the Texas just did cancel for the remainder of the year. Uh, so I know that is a, a, you know, a, a hit to, to all of us. When you are in school, when you are in the building, when you are in those hallways, what are, what are three must do's every day? What are three things that you are going to accomplish no matter what happens you're doing? The, the first thing I do or try to do is, is breakfast duty. Uh, to me, that, that kind of sets the tone for everyone. I want the students to see me. I want the teachers to see me. And, and I try not to miss. So if they see me, hopefully that's a, a sense of, okay, Mr. R's here. It's going to be a great day. Uh, so definitely just my presence alone every single day. I try to get there on time and, and I try to be there in the cafeteria by 730 in the morning so that everyone can see me. I can start greeting students. And, and uh, that's that's very, very important to me. Uh, and that's followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Like I see the Pledge of Allegiance and, and having that moment of silence being led by me as, as something that's important. Uh, that way for whoever didn't see me in the morning, they get to hear my voice. And, and I wanna reassure uh, students and staff that, hey, I'm here, it's gonna be a great day and, and let's rock and roll. Uh, the other thing is, is again, lunch duty. Uh, I love lunch duty. I, I enjoy hanging out with students and, and uh, you know, building those relationships with students goes a long ways. Uh, just having those private conversations in the cafeteria means a lot to me. So uh, I do miss that now that you know, we're, we're not at school. And, and so I definitely miss the students and, and the smiles and, and uh, everything about them. Yeah. And I say one of the things we started doing at our school now virtually, you know, I, I got my shtick when we say the pledge. I, I give a like a good morning staff and students. Uh, so I've done a few of them. And now we've invited students to do the pledge. And we, we put that out on Facebook. Uh, so if that's not happening, maybe that could be something that you can get rolling there uh, so you can see students, so they can see you, right. uh, things like that to be able to connect. Uh, and then uh, Rick Saldivar says, hey, do you do it on a, on a bullhorn or a blowhorn in, in the cab? Is that what you do? Okay. He, he likes the, the, the bullhorn. <laughs> yeah, I, I walk around in the hallways with my bullhorn and, and I know the students at times think it's annoying, and, and uh, but it's 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 my my signature in the hallway. <laughs> and uh, Laura Marie Salinas uh, says you, you really genuinely care about everyone you contact with. And she, uh, she writes here that uh, he believes everyone could be a leader. Tell me about that concept uh, on believing in people to, for leadership in all. Uh, you have to build capacity uh, and, and, and you have to believe in them. You have to trust them and, and just, um, you know, I've had people believe in me, uh, like yourself, Glenn Robbins, uh, Jimmy McDonough, even my my current su superintendent. Uh, and and when someone believes in you, like I know the feeling that I get, so I want to be able to share that same feeling with my staff members, and and I want for them to be leaders, and I always tell them, hey, you know, I, and, and I do leave it up to them. I'm like, hey, I'm here um, to support you, but you tell me 
what we need to accomplish or you tell me what we need to do so that you know we can be successful at the end of the day you know if if we have successful teachers i'm going to be successful if if i don't build them and and if i don't care for them and nurture them then we're going to have a tough year I hear you on that. Uh, the bullhorn is one of your signatures, but also wearing the fresh sneakers at school. I've seen the pictures. I've seen the Friday night lights. I've seen some uh, award ceremonies. Uh, I love wearing sneakers too, getting my school colors in there and uh, almost has become an everyday occurrence for me. But tell me about wearing sneakers to school. And you know, you always dress very professional. So it's not that you're dressing down, but tell me how you work the sneakers in. Yeah, well, uh, Monday through Thursday, and, and just to clear it up, I do wear normal dress shoes. Uh, okay. Uh, but as far as Fridays, you know, I take out the Friday J's, and, and uh, it, it definitely gives me a good feeling to wear those those Air Jordans, and, and they're, they're comfortable. Uh, and, and the kids, they, they they dig when I wear the Jordans on Fridays. So it's and also why, and why Jordan? Why Jordan? Is, they, uh, is Jordan sponsoring Rio Honda? What's the deal here? What, what? Big time. Let me see. There you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, baby. Okay. Why Jordan? Uh, why no, uh, you know, growing up, obviously in 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 the '90s, Michael Jordan. You know, everything was about Michael Jordan. Uh, '80s, '90s, but and and you know what? And and even back when he was at North Carolina, North Carolina was my favorite basketball team at the time. Uh, I still follow North Carolina uh, because of Dean Smith and Michael Jordan. But uh, so growing up, we, we couldn't afford any Air Jordans. You know, there's no way my dad would have purchased, a, you know, sneakers for me for, for that kind of money. But uh, so not too long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, my brother, my older brother uh, bought some new Air Jordans and he was showing them to me. And, and I told him, man, those are nice. You know, I wish I could buy some. And he's like, hey, dude, like, come on, man. Like, you, you can afford some Air Jordans. And, and he said, you know what? At the end of the day, he's like, one day we're all going to pass. And you know what? You might be left with that, that, you know, that, man, I wanted some Air Jordans and I never bought them. So he's like, hey, little brother, just go out and get some. And, and that's it, man. You, you've earned um you know the the right to purchase a Mary Jordan so go ahead and do that and and I did I started with that first pair and and now it's kind of a thing going that's a beautiful story and uh maybe we'll send this to Nike and uh, Nair Jordan to send you some pairs down there for you and your students um before you joined Rio Hondo I say oh, you were at a, at another school what what may you know what prompted the change to to take this new job you've been there uh this is your second year and uh what what did you do differently right when you when you change jobs you have a chance to kind of start over and um you know what made you change jobs there and and what were some things that you did differently well a couple of years ago uh i had the opportunity to come to rio hondo uh and i was hired to at the at the middle school so i was the principal at the middle school for 2 years and at that time, we we're opening up a new campus, a new building. Oh, wow. And so our superintendent uh, basically gave me the, 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 this, this experience that, that I had never been given as far as opening up a new building and uh, uh, just trying to work with the architect and, and the furniture as far as the layout. Uh, I didn't have much of a say so, but still, it was kind of neat going through the process. Um, I, I, we were very successful at the middle school, you know, thanks to the staff and the administration. Uh, we made some huge gains at the middle school. Uh, and then right before uh, the, we finished the school, uh, the principal here at the high school, uh, she, she went and she, she retired. And so I was approached by the superintendent. He's like, hey, uh, I know you've been working for the past two years on, on getting the building going, the, the new building at the middle school. He's like, but you know, we need you at the high school and and, uh, and we're gonna pretty much move you over there. So, uh, but it, it was kind of bittersweet because I did want to open up the building, uh, not gonna lie here. And, uh, but 
going to to the high school has been a blessing. Uh, the way I see it is, uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in faith, and and I do believe God has uh, has put me here at the high school for a reason, and uh, I'm very very grateful for this opportunity to be at the high school. And you had a big jump after just one year, Asaya. That was a huge uh, success for that community and, and you and your staff. You know, what do you attribute that that jump to in, in the scores, right? It's not all about the scores. Like you said, it's the relationships. It's the trust, the honesty, the transparency. Those are the important things. But the numbers are the things that wind up in the reports and the newspaper. You know, you had a big jump after one year. Like what, what do you attribute that to? Uh, again, the first thing is that trust, uh, the trust from staff and, and, and them believing in me that, you know what, uh, I am the person for the high school. Uh, that that, that kind of set the tone. Uh, the other things, we did a lot of things, but uh, we even focused on the little things, just on, uh, say, for example, just the, the fundamentals as far as just posting the objective on a daily basis, mm. uh, you know, making sure that there's an exit ticket or some type of assessment right before the student leaves on a daily basis. Uh, we also uh, gave the teachers, our, and, and let me go back real quick, our, our lesson plans as far as from department to department weren't uniform. So mm -hmm. we kind of looked at that and, and we didn't, I didn't go in right away and say, okay, we're gonna do this change. Uh, we worked with what we had, and then slowly uh, we started making sure that our, our lesson plans were, were uniform and that they were formatted uh, as, as, a, as a team. Uh, so we made sure that we gave teachers planning time, and that planning time was very, very important for, for our lesson plans. Uh, we started having PLCs every, every other week, so those PLCs helped in making sure that we looked at the blueprints as far as the TEA uh, issues out. Uh, we started looking at release tests. Uh, we started speaking a common language and that common language was very, very helpful in making sure that uh, we accomplished our goals. Well, congratulations to you and the, and the school community. Again, those numbers aren't the end all be all, but they get the attention of a lot of people. And when they're going in the right direction, uh, and it starts, you know, again, with all the people that you mentioned. So that's that's beautiful. And uh, and again, you know, I attribute it to the staff, uh, you know, the teachers, uh, our custodians, our, our cafeteria personnel, our counselors, tremendous job. Uh, just everyone coming together, uh, working as a family. And, and that, that went a long ways. Uh, so very, very proud. We had the biggest jump here in South Texas. Uh, as far as going from uh, from a letter C to a letter B, and, and very, very proud of that. Keep rolling with that. You mentioned your dad earlier. You know, your dad has uh, been a great mentor to you. Tell me about some of the leadership lessons uh, from your dad, as well as I know there's a couple other mentors. Some are watching right now. Uh, you've mentioned Glenn Robinson here in New Jersey. Uh, but let me talk, let's start with your dad. Uh, obviously growing up, my dad was my hero. Um, so some of the lessons, I mean, he, every single day he had a lesson for me. Uh, but some of those lessons were, for example, Hey, never be late to work. Just hey. it takes zero talent, you know, for you to make sure that you get there on time. Like you don't have to, you know, just get to work on time. Um, obviously hard work pays off. Uh, be respectful of your elders. And, and he would always tell me, hey, you're not better than anyone, but at the same time, no one else is better than you. That's beautiful, beautiful. And, and tell me about the, the connection with some of the other mentors that have helped you, including Glenn Robbins, who's watching here today. Oh, Glenn Robbins, uh, uh, you know, again, I go back to people believing in you and, and he's one of the, uh, one of the persons that I give credit to as far as that he believes in me. And uh, he's, he's a crazy smart guy, very, very <laughs> smart, uh, very real. Uh, I respect uh, his work ethic, uh, all the things that he's doing up in New Jersey and uh, just a phenomenal leader. And uh, anytime that I try to get ideas, I obviously go to him and, and I look up at, at his Twitter feed and, and 
or you know we'll send uh, daily messages to each other and and just bounce ideas off of so great great person uh, yeah. the other person that helped me a lot uh here in, in south texas is uh jimmy mcdonough and and he's an assistant superintendent here in the neighboring school district and and he taught me a lot about administration as far as even um you know, just the, the even to the attire, how you should be dressing and all that. And, and uh, also his, his work ethic is second to none. It's great. It's important that we have that mentorship and, and people learning from each other. And, and I'm sure you've done that over your career to many people. Uh, but so it's such great to have the power of the PLN, right? To connect with educators. Here you are connecting with people from New Jersey. You've been out there to a few conferences to present uh, and it's just beautiful to see, you know, bringing our country together now, certainly during this time, too, where we can't be in touch with other people. But we as school leaders, if you have that PLN, you can. So that's great to hear. And, and kudos to you for building those relationships. Yes, sir. And uh, no, definitely very grateful for, for Twitter. You know, Twitter has opened a lot of doors and it's made me a better person, uh, not only on the personal side, but also on the professional side. So definitely growing every single day, learning from, you know, people all over the nation and even around the world. Um, uh, I guess an another mentor, and I do want to mention, and, and growing up, uh, my other person that always had me in check was my brother. Uh, and and he he made sure I stayed away from, from all the drugs and, and all those things that were going on in our neighborhood. Uh, and, and he would always keep me in check. And I'm talking about physically, he would beat me up. Uh, and he made sure that I didn't get too high. Uh, and, and he would even, I even credited him to making sure that I got into fights uh, there in my neighborhood. And, and now I know why. And he was just trying to make sure that I wouldn't get picked on uh, there in my neighborhood. So, you know, definitely another mentor of mine. I feel a movie coming on, I say, uh, hearing these stories. <laughs> I say, uh, I, I commented to you earlier, it's so quiet in your house. You have a big family. You got dogs. You have five kids. How are you balancing it all right now? Um, you know, your family, your job. How, how are you doing it all uh, and getting it all done? It's you know what, and, and I'll say this: it's been a bit overwhelming as far as this uh, remote instruction, uh, and and they, they do respect my 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 space and and my position, and I have to be available for my staff, uh, and and you know just trying to juggle and manage uh, Voxer, email, text, phone calls, uh, Microsoft Team meetings, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, it's 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 hard but uh yeah definitely my 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 family does uh know the role that i have to play yeah and that's great to hear how about you particularly how what are you doing for yourself what are you doing to take care of yourself and sharpening your saw that you stay sharp and that you feel good that you can continue to lead what are some things that you're doing uh the first thing is exercising i have to go for a run uh i started this uh uh, 30 for 30 challenge. Uh, so there's some people out there, some fit leaders, some Zaz family that they're taking on this challenge. So basically uh, running a 5K every day for 30 days. Wow. Uh, so uh, Murphy from uh, Brenham, Texas, him and I, we kind of started this and it's been great. So definitely just building that sweat. And, and once I'm out there running, it, it, it kind of releases some stress and, and, uh, I enjoy that. It keeps me away from the devices. So that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah, definitely exercise is, 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 uh, is something that I, that I believe in. And I know, uh, old Ryan Jackson from Tennessee, he, his line is always, uh, live better, lead better. So I definitely take that uh, to heart. I like that. It's currently snowing here in Pennsylvania, <laughs> so it's been very oh, wow. frustrating to not run. And I saw the temperature has been in the 70s down there and 80s. Uh, oh, so yeah. that's, uh, that's beautiful. Uh, that's great to be outside. It's been so frustrating with the weather. 
Um, I'll say, oh, we're going to wrap up soon. Uh, we're going to get to rapid fire. But was there anything else you wanted to share or, or a question that I didn't ask you? Again, you have a lot of people from your community watching. Uh, you have a lot of experience. Was there anything else that, that we didn't touch on uh, that you wanted to share? Uh, no, but I, I do want to give some shout outs, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's do it. And, and just a, a, a shout out to, to my staff there in Rio Hondo and, and the entire district. Uh, you know, we were thrown this COVID-19 uh, and, and, and our teachers, you know, and, and I'll be honest, we were not prepared for this. I, I don't think anyone was, uh, but they've been rolling with the punches and, and they've been very patient. Uh, they've been very empathetic, compassionate. And, and so I do want to thank our staff, uh, not only at the high school level, but at the middle school and at the elementary level. Uh, main office, everyone has been uh you know, we, we've we've taken on this challenge and, and, and we're, we're, we're doing good. Uh, and also a shout out to my custodians who are still working. Mm. Um, they're not working on a Saturday, but during the week, they're still working. Uh, our cafeteria personnel and, and our nurse, they continue to distribute meals to our students. So they're still out there and, and uh, God bless them and, and, and thank you for all that they do. And, and one last shout out to my seniors. I definitely miss you guys and and we're gonna get through this and and somehow we're gonna make some type of graduation happen for you know for you guys so thank you guys and and that's it miss you beautiful well said val tagle says she loves you on the voxer here uh and rick uh shared rick saldivar uh you gone vegan here is that true well at the beginning of the of this year uh i started uh well, I didn't. I didn't start it, but my my wife started me on this vegan, and and I gladly accepted it. Uh, so it it had a lot of positives uh, for my first couple of months here in 2020. But obviously, with this COVID 19, the vegan has kind of uh, gone off by the wayside. But uh, yeah, it, it it did make me feel better, and and uh, uh, it gave me some energy. So definitely, that plant based diet. Uh, it, it, it's, I, I did enjoy it. Good for you. I know it's uh, steak country down there. <laughs> Beef I know it, it's hard. <laughs> you got, uh, who's the guy that does the steak advertising? Uh, he loves uh, Austin, Texas, the actor. Um, he's oh, Matthew there. McConaughey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll say, uh, let's get to rapid fire to get you back to your family and uh, give yes, you sir. some time off here on a Saturday. Uh, rapid fire. These are quick answers. Uh, quickest uh, that comes to your head. We'll go with last book you read. Uh, Live Your Excellence by Jimmy Casas. Yeah, man. Yeah, beautiful. Last movie you saw? The Way Back with Ben Affleck. That was at the, the movies. The basket, yeah, the basketball. <laughs> yeah. How was that? I liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, good movie. Okay. Uh, favorite place to travel? Hey, the entire state of Texas, man. So much to see, so much to do. Beautiful. Something that motivates you? Life. Life itself. A pet peeve of yours? Tardiness. <laughs> Amen, brother. Uh, the most famous person from Texas, in your opinion? Uh, probably either Matthew McConaughey or Willie Nelson. Okay. Uh, the best thing about the Gulf that you are fond of? Oh, man, the warm water. I miss it. Right now the beaches are closed. Uh, and definitely the seafood. We have the best shrimp in the entire world. Wow. Cowboys or Texans? Hey, that's not even a question. Everyone knows. Cowboys. Oh, aren't you close to Houston now? How is hey, that? How? Cowboys all the way. Remember, <laughs> the Texans didn't exist. Yeah, we had the Oilers. We had the Oilers, but now nah, I've always been a cowboy. Uh, the elementary that I grew up in, the mascot were, was the Cowboys. And the high school that I graduated from were the Cowboys. <laughs> you know, I'm a Giants fan up here in New York. I saw <laughs> <laughs> that don't I mess sorry like oil, for you. <laughs> oil and water. But I do want to come down to that stadium uh, and check that out. And uh, yeah. Uh, best purchase under a hundred dollars that has had a great impact on your life. Well, aside from these uh, 
gla reading glasses that were 1099 at the dollar store. <laughs> uh, no, but I would say Twitter, Twitter, if, if, if all educators should be on Twitter, great investment and you spend zero dollars. Yeah. There's a lot of return there. I agree with you. Uh, something that Asael Rubalcaba that people don't know about. Uh, I tried out for the Cincinnati Reds. Wow. Let's break for a second. Tell me hey, about that. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> You're a baseball guy. Yeah, baseball guy. And you know what? A couple years ago, we took our kids to go watch a game uh, between the Yankees and the, uh, and the Astros. So we're there and we see Aaron Judge and and uh, and so then my daughter, my oldest daughter, she turns around. She's like, Dad, you know, she sees all these huge guys. She's like, Dad, she pats me on the back and she's like, now I know why you never make the major leagues. <laughs> I'm like, hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> I miss baseball. Yeah, man. Uh, I believe we all have a book in us. What would be the title of your book? Man, something about defying odds, but it has to be something with uh, where where I come from, something dealing with my roots, and and uh, just because I'm very proud of where I come from. Yeah, short term goal, three to five months. You know what? Uh, getting ready for a possible remote instruction in the fall. We don't know what's going to happen with COVID nineteen, so just trying to get ready and trying to get our staff ready and our parents and our community. And, and hopefully we can uh, come up with a great plan uh, for all of our students. Long-term goal, three to five years. You know what? Uh, I, I guess I've been inspired by Glenn Robbins and, and the entire Twitter community, but uh, trying to create a, a national level conference, educational conference, uh, here in South Texas, uh, our educators uh, would definitely here our, our our educators would definitely benefit by this. So trying to coordinate, uh, trying to put up an event like this here in South Texas. Beautiful. Count me in. Uh, a, a book recommendation. You certainly mentioned Jimmy Casas' book, uh, "Live Your Excellence." I know that just came out. Uh, is there a book that really that you, know, you love? That's something that you you go back to. Uh, Stillness is the key, I guess, uh, by Ryan Holiday. Great book. Uh, it, it talks about stoicism, and, and uh, I, I enjoyed the stories that were included on there. By uh, it had a lot of sports and a lot of history, and then uh, that's the perfect book for me. I'm a history guy and a, and a sports guy. Beautiful. And I know uh, we had the same coffee mug, but yours has a cool uh, logo on the back. Tell me about your quote here. Send it. What does that mean? And and we're going to send it in here in a moment. But, yeah, move it over a little more so we can see it. Yeah. Okay. It I'm says send it on there. There you go. What what does that mean to you? And what, where does that, that saying come from? Uh, send it. Uh, I I use that, that quote every single day. Anytime I answer the phone. Uh, when I'm speaking to to a teacher, uh, even at, at in the cafeteria when I'm picking up plates, uh, I always tell the kids, "Hey, send me your plate so I can throw it away." So I say, "Hey, send it, send it." Uh, but basically, it reminds me that, "Hey, I'm I'm here to serve you," and and that's what it's a reminder of. I'm I'm serving you, so send me whatever problem you have, or send me uh, whatever question you might have, and and I'm here to help. So that's what it reminds me of. Send it. I'll say Send you, it. you did a fantastic job. We're going to wrap up here. We're going to play some of the, this music again, if I could cue this up. Uh, this is Asael Ruvalcaba, everyone. His Twitter is on here. Uh, Asael underscore Ruvalcaba. And certainly his school's Twitter is on here as well. The Bobcat, Rio Hondo. Um, Asael, you did a fantastic job. I really appreciate you coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you a lot. You, I stay appreciate you stay on the line before you go. Let me cue this music up. All right. Asael, move up. Kaba, everyone. Uh, let me play this. Figure out how to do it. Sorry. Here we go. All right. There we go. We're going to sign off here on Education Leadership Beyond. This was show number 123. 
Shout out to the uh, Education Podcast Network, Voice Ed Radio Canada, iTunes and beyond. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, follow us on Twitter. And if I could help you in any way, don't hesitate to reach out at Andy Mulata 21. Send it, baby. You stay on that line, huh?